David Boyle, and I'm quitting alcohol. So the episode I did yesterday, Life at the Party, where I actually talk about some of the fucking difficulties you have quitting alcohol for a change. I've been getting quite a few messages from people telling me a little bit about their story or someone they know. So I just thought I would read one of the emails I got from a listener. If you haven't listened to yesterday's episode, basically what happened was on Friday, there was a fucked up Friday story. One of the characters in the story, a guy named Brandon, he's like the archetypical fucking wild child, fucking crazy man on the booze. Anyway, he ended up dying of cirrhosis of the liver because he couldn't get his shit together. Then I did an episode yesterday just saying fucking how hard it is to be that life of the party guy and then stop drinking because life of the party guy becomes your personality. Anyway, here's an email from a listener I got yesterday or today. I'll just say that after listening to the podcast just now, I felt a strong inclination to email you. You fucking hit the nail on the head. So this is all speaking about my experience. Obviously, everyone is different. I've been drinking since I was 16. Here in the UK, the culture to drink is absolutely ingrained into everything we do. I don't need to talk about that too much because it has been said and discussed to death. I was a shy kid, but have always been good at making friends. That's similar to me. I was shy as fuck as a kid. I'm still actually pretty shy, but you know... I also don't care anymore. (laughs) My shyness has been fucking overtaken by my lack of fucking care. Booze absolutely accelerated that and I was absolutely known for being the life of the party because of it throughout school, college and uni. I actually went through a period of sobriety for many years after and I lost all those friends and I was called boring. That seems like such an insult when you're like in your 20s. When you get a little bit older, that means absolutely fucking nothing. He's boring. Yeah, who gives a fuck? Zero care. And you always lose all your drinking friends once you quit drinking. Because you're a boring cunt. Anyway, I made new friends who were much healthier. And funnily enough, I felt great all the time and didn't even miss it. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> it's batting at 100%. I felt better. It was the best decision I've made in my life. I felt great all the time. Unfortunately, I ended up turning back to the drink after a bad relationship. And lo and behold, all of them, all those friends came back. What transient cunts. I'm back to being the life of the party, back to being the performer And when my self-esteem was at its lowest, it was booze that pretended to show me it was all right. Yeah, man, it's all fucking false confidence. It's all fucking, it's just all false. Another thing that becomes brutal as well, when you're that life of the party type guy, is you eventually fucking become that fucking performer type character doing all the crazy shit because everyone else is so fucking boring. So... For the party to be good, someone needs to do something. And you look around and you're like, these cunts won't be fucking amping the night up, that's for sure. Someone's got to take the bull by the horns, and I guess it's me, so you fucking get relied on. Although, I think quite a few times I was not invited (laughs) to parties or out drinking with friends for the exact same reason. We just want to have a chill night. We don't want any possibility of arrest or a fight. I'm now still in the cycle, mid-30s and drinking because I think it's the only thing that makes me fun. It has absolutely stripped my confidence to be who I am. It has changed my body in a way that's unrecognizable. And I know it's the leading cause of my depression and anxiety. A hundred percent. I really want it to stop and I try all the time to get a lid on it, only to fall back down again. I'm not sure where I'm going with this, but all I want to say is that I resonate with the podcast a lot. I've been listening to you for years now, and you definitely at least keep it in my mind all the time that stopping drinking is absolutely the right thing to do. Then he says a bunch of other nice stuff. 
Thank you for sending that in, by the way. I feel for you, man. And I know exactly fucking where you're at. I was in a similar fucking position for a long time. The hardest part of everything is coming to terms with the fact that you have to quit drinking forever. It is like fucking breaking up with someone. It's like a relationship. It's fucking difficult. But not only is it a relationship, it's your fucking lifelong relationship. You've been drinking since you were 16. You've turned to it at every moment of anguish, despair, fucking joy, whatever. It's ingrained in you. It's a part of you. So it's like the biggest breakup you're ever going to make in your entire life. So you're clinging to it. But the problem is, and why it doesn't work, is you have to, in your mind, make it concrete that when you quit drinking, it's over. That's it. It's done. It's finished. There's no going back to it. There's no fucking booty calls. There's nothing. It's fucking over. The love of my life has fucking left and it's done. And it's time to fucking move on. And it takes a fucking while. It takes a while. But you need to be fucking concrete that when you give up, that that's it. No little breaks. No, I'll take a year off. No, any of that. It's like, now I stop drinking and I'm never having a drink until the day I die. That's how you get the power back. And then fuck everyone else. Fuck everyone else. All those drinking mates of yours are just trying to drag you down to where they are. The reason they weren't hanging out with you when you were like healthy, sober and successful is because when you're fucking down in the gutter, you don't like looking at fucking healthy, successful cunts. I certainly didn't. I surrounded myself with fucking loser cunts as well or no one or I just chased my friends away. Anyway, thanks for sending that in. I uh, didn't even ask if I could read it out, but fucking you're anonymous anyway, so don't worry about it. I'm heading to a show. Sam Morell, a New York comedian, is playing, so I'm going down with a few comedians to check that out. Anyway, fucking that'll do, and I'll see you the fuck later.